obviously in the precious metals market, not a great year. 2013 was a bad year. Um, so our first down year in 12 years. Uh, the mainstream media appears now to have an endless supply of pundits who are claiming the death of the bull market. Um, Peter, if the stock market had 12 years of gains and then one year of losses, do you believe they would be reacting in the same way? Why well, is the mainstream media so against gold? Because, again, you know, what is gold? It's a bet that things are going to go wrong, right? Nobody wants to believe that things are going to go wrong, right? These are the, the, the naysayers, the perma bearers, you know, the gold bugs. You know, there's no stock bug, right? You can, you can be bullish all the time. You're, you're not a perma bull. You know, if you just always say buy stocks no matter what, you're just a regular guy. You're just a, an investor, right? You're someone that we should respect and admire. Um, but, yeah, people don't want to like gold. Because what does gold mean? It means that we're having inflation, that QE isn't working, that we're losing confidence in the paper market. So gold, everybody wants the price of gold to go down, and, and it's almost like a validation. See, everything is great because the price of gold is going down, so there's nothing to worry about. The fact that gold is going down confirms the fact that there's nothing to worry about. And all those doomsayers that were telling us to buy gold because they thought there were problems, the price of gold going down proves that they were wrong. That there were no problems. That the, you know that they're just you know worried about nothing. So. They want to gloat. They want to say, I told you so. There are people who are literally, you know, I've, I've seen them for 10 years, 12 years, telling people not to buy gold, not to buy gold, don't buy it, no buy it. And now they're saying, I told you so. They're running a victory. You get one down year. It's still way above where it was years ago when they told people not to buy it. Uh, yet they're the ones that were right. And the guys who were saying buy it for 12 years in a row, they're the ones that are wrong because it finally had a year where it went down. But I think the fact that we had so much bullishness, off of one down year is very, very bullish for gold. In fact, I read an article just in the Wall Street Journal yesterday that mentioned that even those hedge fund managers that are buying gold right now and nibbling in the gold mining sector, they're embarrassed to admit it. I mean, they're keeping it quiet. It's like they know if they say they're buying gold, they're just going to be laughed at. So they don't want to even have to justify why they're doing it. They're embarrassed. You know, it's like you can be proud that you're buying Twitter. But, oh, you know, you buy a gold stock and, you know, it's, you, know you better keep it quiet. It's like you're in the closet. You know, you can't, you can't, you can't come out because, you know, you're afraid of uh, the reaction. So you have to be a closet gold buyer. But that, I, think, I think that's great uh, sentiment that you have all the speculative money is out of the market. All the hot money is gone. Uh, so, I mean, where's the market going to go? It's only got one way to go. I mean, once this thing bottoms out, it's going to be a huge rally. Because, you know, the sellers are going to be gone, and the buyers are still there. And once the market rallies sufficiently to, to, to change the sentiment around to the point where the, the speculative money, the investor money, wants back in, where is the gold going to come from? Because all the gold that was liquidated in the last year that was blown out of these ETFs, that gold's not coming back to the market. The buyers aren't going to sell it. They don't care where the price is. If that gold was bought by a central bank in China, I mean, they're never going to sell it, ever, no matter what the price is. So the, the, the gold's not going to be there. Meanwhile, the mines haven't been producing. They're, they have, you know, they've been cutting back. And, you know, so you're not going to have all this new production. Where's the gold going to come from? You know, and the real physical demand is going to, is going to continue to grow. The investor demand is going to come back. Uh, and so the price is going to go ballistic at one point. Uh, you know, when that is, I don't know. But I still think it's better to be in it now. I think I'd rather be in it and take the heat, take the pain, let people make fun of me, than chase it, you know, after, you know. I mean, I think some of these gold stocks could double uh, before anybody even notices that they've turned around. You know, and, 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 and you know, there are people that, look, I don't, they only want to buy when they know the bottom is in. Well, by the time you know the bottom is in, you're way, way above it looking down. You know, I, I'd rather buy knowing that the bottom's not in. I don't care. I mean, I'm not on leverage. I don't have options. But I, and I'm patient, and I know I'm right. So I'll buy the stocks that I know has value because most of these fund managers, they don't, they're afraid to stick their neck out. You know, they want to do what everybody else is doing. And they don't care if they're wrong just as long as everybody else is wrong with them because they want to be right in the short run. They don't want to buy a gold stock at five that might go to three or two, they'd rather buy the same stock at 15 when, they, when everybody agrees it's going to 20, right? That's what they want to do. They want to buy when it's high and going up, not when it's low and going down. Even in absolute terms, they're better off buying it when it's low and going down, but they can't take the risk because short term, 
Maybe they'll get fired for doing that. They have to do what everybody else is doing. They can't go out on the limb and do what they think is right, because what if they're wrong? You know, when you're dealing with other people's money, which is what most people do, most people are managing other people's money. So what difference does it make if they lose it? It's not their money. What they're caring about is their job. And they don't want to lose their job, so they do what everybody else is doing. So if everybody else is buying Twitter, that's what you buy. Because if you don't buy it, and everybody else buys it, and it goes up, you're fired. Why didn't you buy it? You know, you go out on a limb and you buy some gold stock, and no one else buys it, and it goes down. You moron, why did you buy that gold stock? Don't you know gold's dead? Everything is great? How can you be stupid enough and buy that stock? So why take the risk when it's somebody else's money? Uh, and so that's why you know you got to have guys that are willing to you know do what's right, stick by principle, do what's right for the long run, and work with their clients and tell their clients, you know, hey, you know this is you know th- this is our strategy. You know we're managing your money like it's our own money, and you know we're not going to chase this short-term performance at the, at the and sacrifice. Long-term results. You know we're going to we're going to be in this for the end game, and I think the people that stick with it. You know, either with my clients or you know Sprott's clients. I mean, you know, we're you know, you know, uh, I know that Sprott had a you know they had a tough year last year, but you know what? I mean, there's going to be really good years, and I think the people that had good years last year, you know, we'll see how, we'll see how they're doing in a few more years. But I don't think it's going to end well for them. Um, but you know, just like you know, you go to a poker game, you know, there are people that can be ahead in the beginning. There are people that can win a few hands. Sometimes the better poker players will let their opponents win a few hands. None of that matters. What matters is how, what do you have, how many chips do you have at the end of the game, right? You could be ahead at the beginning, but if you go home broke, who's, you know, what did you win? You won nothing, right? The, maybe you, the fact that you can remember a point where you were up doesn't do you any good when you leave broke, right? And even if you have to lose a few hands to win the game, hey, you know, or in chess, I mean, sometimes you sacrifice a couple of pieces when it means that you're going to get in a better position and ultimately win the game. The, 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 the player who's not as good might not realize it. He might think he's winning because, you know, he took your knight or he took your bishop, but he, not, he might not see the bigger picture and realize what's going on. I, I think that's the same thing that's happening right now in the markets. I think that the people who are in the resource space, buying these gold stocks, buying precious metals, they're just thinking several moves in advance, and they're going to win the game. You know, I think the key is that, you know, People just have to stick with the strategy and not get shaken out uh, by the noise and, and, and by the hype and, and, and the conventional, you know, wisdom or, you know, lack of wisdom. I agree, Peter, and uh, I think the day is coming sooner rather than later. But also um, – <clears throat> I believe there's a lot of countries that see this coming too. I don't think it's just, uh, you know, a few individuals such as me and you and um, a few others, but in the precious metal community. Do you ever vision a day when we could go back to the gold standard? And if so, what, what country do you think would be leading the charge? Well, absolutely. I mean, I, I do believe that the world will be back on the gold standard. I mean, if you look throughout history, the gold standard is the norm. It, what we have now is an aberration. I mean, and it's not like paper money is a brand new invention. I mean, we've had paper money for centuries, right? So we've had paper, we've had gold. It's just that the, the norm has been gold as money. I mean, that's why the founding fathers, when they wrote the U.S. Constitution, they didn't want paper money. They specifically put us on a gold standard because they didn't want paper money. So paper money existed, you know, in 1780 when we were writing the Constitution. The con- you know, they knew about it. In fact, we had something called the Continental in the United States, which was paper money issued by the Continental Congress that collapsed and, you know, gave way to the phrase not worth a Continental. So the founding fathers knew about paper money. They experienced paper money, and they rejected it, right, because it didn't work. And, and so they were forward-thinking. And we were on a gold standard, right? And, and so throughout history, gold has been money. There have been periods of time where paper has been money. What's different about today versus past periods is normally your paper money is limited to one country or a couple of countries, right? You have some countries that will experiment with it while others are smart enough not to. The only difference is this time we've got everybody doing the experiment at the same time. But just because everybody is doing it doesn't mean it's going to work, right? You know, just by everybody doing it doesn't make it worse. The, the laws of economics aren't changed because you've got more people doing the same failed experiment, right? It's not going to work. It's just bigger. And so that means, you know, all paper currencies have collapsed. It's always created chaos and problems, except now it's not localized. It's the entire world that's going to have to deal with it. 
But as far as your question is, you know, which country is going to be the first to go in that direction, right? Somebody's going to have to do it first. Somebody's going to remonetize gold first, right? Because America led the world off the gold standard, right? We were the ones. Because the reason that a lot of countries adopted the dollar as a reserve was because the dollar was as good as gold. The dollar was backed by gold, and you could take your dollars to the U.S. government, and it would give you gold. So that's where the, the whole phrase, the dollar is as good as gold, because for a while it was. So when the world initially adopted the dollar as a reserve, we were still on a gold standard. It wasn't until Nixon took us off in 71, and he, he said it was temporary, and he's right. It, was, it is going to be temporary. It's just taking a lot longer than maybe people thought. But the world was still on the gold standard until 1971. So, you know, this is a relatively new thing. But we took uh, the world off the gold standard, and we're going to take it back on. Not because we declare it, but because the dollar is going to collapse and, that, and gold is going to be the only way out. You know, because once the dollar collapses and now, you know, there's no reserve, right? Because if, if, if you have dollars as reserve for your currency and now there's a dollar crisis, what are your reserves? You've got no reserves. So if the dollar collapses, what's the euro worth? You know, what's the yen worth? I mean, if the yen is backed by nothing, what's it worth? It, it used to be backed by dollars, but so what? So they're going to have to back countries are going to have to back their currency with something, and they'll back it with gold. That's why central banks own gold. They still own it. They don't own something else. They're ready, and other central banks are starting to buy more and more gold to position themselves for the point in time where they have to replace their dollar reserves with gold. They have to have something behind their currency. That's why, look, all the gold that's mined in China, where is that gold? It doesn't leave China. The Chinese government buys it. Uh, China's importing gold. So China might be the first country. You never know. They've got a lot of dollars, a lot of foreign reserves. Uh, they're the biggest gold producer. They very well could be the first country to remonetize gold. Because right now, the RMB is pegged to the dollar. And the Chinese, uh, the, the Hong Kong dollar is pegged to the U.S. dollar. So you have two Chinese currencies pegged to the dollar. So they have a pegged currency. Well, what if they announce that it's not pegged to the dollar, it's pegged to gold? You know, because if they want to keep it pegged and keep it have an anchor, that they can anchor it to something of real value instead of something of, of with no value. And then, you know, maybe the, you know that would be a big thing. And if China does it, other countries might follow their lead. Uh, but it is going to happen. And eventually the U.S. is going to be back on a gold standard because how else is it going to work? Once the dollar crashes, what are we going to use as a currency? Another, are they going to just whip out another fiat currency and say, well, this is dollar 2.0? Well, what's the difference between dollar two and, and the last one? Like you're going to make different color ink. It's still the same piece of paper. So in order to make it different, in order to differentiate it from the last worthless currency, you know, the way other countries do it, when you have like a big inflation, they devalue and then they peg, right? They'll peg to the dollar. They'll say, okay, this new currency, this new peso is now pegged to the dollar, and that's what gives you confidence in it because now it's pegged to the dollar. Well, what, what, what are we going to peg our currency to? Are we going to peg it to the yuan? You know, we're going to peg it to the euro. So the only thing that would make sense would be gold, right? If we have massive inflation, how do you restore confidence in the dollar? Back it by gold. Now it's different, right? Now it's, now it's a dollar backed by something. And people say, well, you know, we'll never do that. Well, what's, what seems more viable to do? Because think back. We used to have a dollar backed by gold. And the government was able to convince people that a dollar backed by nothing was better than a dollar backed by something. I mean, getting people to go off the gold standard, to me, is a lot harder than getting them to go back on it, because that makes sense. Hey, your, your dollar's backed by nothing. Now we're going to back it by something real to give it value. That makes sense. So the fact that we were able to convince the public to abandon the gold standard, that was, that, that was you know, a difficult thing to do. Getting them to go back on it is going to be easy, especially when there's chaos, right, and massive inflation, and you know, we've got we to have a solution to the problem. So we will be back on a gold standard. The world will be back on a gold standard. Question is when, and you know, as far and, and the other, the, the I don't know exactly when, but I, I know one thing: I don't want to buy my gold after it's remonetized, because you know how expensive it's going to be then. So you need to own your gold before, way before the time where we go back on a gold standard, because you know we we could have a we, I mean, gold could could do what uh, what bitcoins did. I agree. I think that day is coming too. Um, and like you said, it's better to be ahead of the curve then, because once it happens, it's it's too late then. You're going to lose all your wealth, and like a lot of people are saying, it's going to be one of the greatest wealth transfers in history. Yep, and I, I want to be on the receiving end of that transfer. I don't want to be on the the losing end. 
Exactly. Because so, all the, I mean, all the actual wealth. I mean, when you have a collapse in currencies, right? All the actual wealth, right? The, the buildings, the, the the factories, the plant and equipment, you know, the the houses, the yachts. I mean, all the stuff is still here. None of that stuff goes away, right? So when you have a big financial collapse, when you have currency collapses, what happens is the ownership of that stuff is going to change because none of the stuff is going away. We just lose the paper. But, and the paper is just a claim on that stuff. The stuff is all going to be there. So the question is, who is going to own the stuff? And I think the people who own a lot of gold right now are going to own a lot of stuff. And the people who have a lot of stuff and a lot of paper are going to have to sell that stuff to the people that have the gold. That's what's going to happen. So given that, Peter, what's your forecast for this year? Do you think this year is going to be better than last year? And also, uh, do you believe the resumption of the bull market is going to begin? And uh, what's your long-term forecast well, on top of your short term? It would be pretty hard for this year not to be better than last year. I mean, last year was so bad that, you know, you know a call that, you know, saying that this year is not going to be – is going to be better than last year, you know, I think – I mean, that's pretty – High probability. I mean, I, you know, in fact, I think, you know, we've had three bad years in a row when it comes to the gold stocks, right? Um, you know, the metals might have only had one, but the stocks have been performing poorly for longer. So I, I would be very, very surprised if this was a down year for gold or gold stocks. I mean, I, I am anticipating that it's a positive year. The question is how positive? You know, is it going to be a big run or is it going to be small? Uh, but I, I tend to believe that if we do get a turnaround, it, it could be a very big one. I mean, I think the momentum could really gather uh, for, for for the metal. So, you know, I would, you know, I, I I bought more, you know, myself, you know, in the last quarter of 2013, I was buying gold stocks, uh, more gold stocks than the physical metal. Uh, but I was a buyer. But you know, of course, I've been buying, you know, all the way down. It's not like I just started buying. Um, but you know. I haven't. I didn't lose any confidence. I haven't bought any stocks so you know for myself in 2014 yet because I bought you know stuff you know going even up until the last couple of days of 2013. I was I was buying because I was thinking there was some tax loss selling going on. In fact, I did some tax loss selling myself. But when I sold gold stocks at a loss, I bought other gold stocks at the same time. So I wasn't really you know getting out. I just needed to generate some losses because I had some gains and some other things that I that I that I sold that I needed to offset. So and I and you know, where I had my losses, my biggest losses were in the mining stocks. But I didn't want to get out of the mining stocks, so I had to just sell some and buy others, right? I mean, they're a lot of them are the same. I mean, they're you know they're not identical, but they're you know pretty close. But um, I, I do think that it's going to be you know there's a high probability that we're going to have a good year, and you know and and if it's not, I mean here's how I think about it: if they can keep this phony economy going for another year. Right, another year of more money printing, more QE, bigger deficits, with the economy getting that much further out of whack. The longer we have to wait for the payday when it comes to precious metals, the bigger that payday is going to be. And it seems to be getting bigger and bigger because um, as they extend to pretend, it's going to be that much bigger of a collapse. Oh, no, no question about it. I mean, it's already going to be much bigger than the 08 collapse. And and the difference is now is there's no there's no bailout to fix it. Uh, and, and the other big difference of the, you know, the 08 collapse is at the beginning of that period, people didn't know what the Fed was going to do. I mean, I knew, but most people didn't know, and they thought maybe there would be a lot of bankruptcies, maybe it would be a deflationary collapse like the 1930s. And so gold went down, gold stocks went down, the dollar went up. I don't think anybody is going to have those fears the next time around. Everybody is going to expect Janet Yellen to print, 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 there will be no worries about failures of banks. Uh, it will it'll be money, you know, spigots open as wide as possible, right? That is what the Fed has committed to. That is their precedent. So I think the next crisis, when this bubble bursts, it's a dollar crisis, right? It's the dollar collapsing and, and, and gold going straight up. Instead of people selling their gold when the crisis begins, They'll be buying it. And in fact, if you think about it, leading up to the 2008 financial crisis, a lot of people had been buying gold and gold stocks. There were a lot of skeptics of the Fed. There were a lot of people who were worried about low interest rates and a housing bubble. And they were buying gold and they were buying gold stocks. And I remember, I mean, my stocks were way up there. I was making, I was making more money. This was the funny part is I was the bear, right? And I was going on television talking about the bubble, talking about the, the phony economy. 
And everybody was trying to make fun of me because I was, they said, well, you're missing out on the stock market. I said, well, I'm not missing out on anything. Look at the stuff that I'm buying, my gold stocks, my oil stocks, my foreign stock. I mean, everything I'm buying is going up more than the, the Dow and the, than the S&P. So, so there, was, there, there were people that were skeptical. But then when the bubble burst, that the crisis hit, everything went down, including the stuff that I was buying, right? Because now all of a sudden the people who had been buying gold as a hedge and gold, they sold too, just like everybody else. They had margin calls. They owned other things. I mean, everything went down. But now you don't have that. You don't have this big class of speculators who have loaded up on gold stocks anticipating a crisis. Nobody is anticipating this crisis, and no one has bought gold in anticipation. So you can't buy the rumor, sell the fact when it comes to gold, because no one bought the rumor, because nobody, there isn't even a rumor. So when this crisis hits, everybody is going to be caught by surprise, and no one's going to own gold. So that's where people are going to go. Just like they went to treasuries in 2008, they're going to go to gold uh, when this next crisis hits. I agree. I think there's going to be staggering gains to be had in the gold and silver sector. Peter, in conclusion, can you please tell our listeners about any of the services you provide and also any of upcoming uh, speaking engagements you may have? Well, I, I'm going to be up in Canada. I'm going to be up at the Cambridge House in Vancouver in, what is it, like a week and a half. That's what the exact date or a week from now. I'm going to be up there. So that's the next time I'm up in, in Canada. But I get up there, you know, quite a bit. I also have a Canadian office, you know, Europac Canada. I have offices in Vancouver, Montreal, and Toronto. And there we're a broker-dealer, and so you know we help people manage their money. Uh, for those south of the border, uh, I've got Europe Pacific Capital and Europe Pacific Asset Management, and you know we're a broker-dealer and asset management company. Uh, my ma- asset management company also runs nine mutual funds. We just launched our ninth fund this week. It's a foreign dividend payers fund. We launched our first gold fund about three or four months ago. Uh, I had never had a gold fund, and the value seemed so compelling. I, I launched a gold fund, even though we've been buying gold stocks individually for our clients in our managed accounts. We didn't have a mutual fund that was dedicated to the sector, so now we do. Uh, and I also, you know, probably my fastest growing business right now is my offshore bank, Europe Pacific Bank, which is based uh, in uh, St. Vincent's, which doesn't accept American customers, but it does accept Canadians and people from all around the world. Uh, but we have great uh, services at my bank. What makes my bank unique is that it is a 100% reserve bank, so we don't loan out any depositor funds. Uh, so all of our depositors could collect their deposits on the same day and you know, wouldn't impact the, the, the capital of the bank, uh, so the bank would be solvent. Uh, in the meantime, we have great services that we offer in addition to just banking services and wire. Uh, we have asset management. I have mutual funds, managed accounts, brokerage accounts, forex trading, even our, our debit card that we have, our MasterCard, you can denominate it in gold or silver and actually have it back. You know, your, your, your savings are in gold and silver, and then you can spend it using your debit card. So there's all sorts of very unique products. It's a private, you know, secret bank protected by the secrecy laws of, of St. Vincent's. Uh, so your money is safe. Um, you know, it's secure. You know, you know, there's no, you know, people are worried now. You know, you have all these buy-ins. You know, people had their money in Cyprus or other countries. We don't have insured deposits, but our imp- deposits don't have to be insured because we're not taking any risk because we don't have any loans. I don't have a mortgage portfolio to worry about. You know, the, you know, we, we make all of our money on fees, and our fees are low you know, compared to a lot of the other banks, so we offer a really good deal for our clients down at the bank. So that's one of my newer companies, uh, and that's, uh, that's going. Also, you know, I would suggest that if people want to hear my thoughts, that they tune in daily to my radio show at uh, shiftradio.com. It's a live show for two hours a day, but if you can't listen from 12 to noon Eastern, you can go to shiftradio.com. You can listen whenever you want. We just repeat the broadcast. The best way is to become a premium member, uh, and that's, I think, five or six bucks a month. It also includes video. Uh, you can try it for free for 30 days, too, so people can sign up, see if they like the premium service. If not, they can just listen for free. Also, my YouTube channel, we just moved over 100,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel, Shift Report, I put out a lot of very interesting videos on the YouTube channel, so I would suggest that people subscribe. That way, as I post new videos, we've got you know over six, 650 I've already posted. So as I post them, you, know, you get a little reminder. You can check them out. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff going on in the YouTube channel. You mentioned my two new books, uh, How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes, Collector's Edition just came out, my revised version of The Real Crash, 
which uh, was a New York Times bestseller the week when the, the original one came out. I think I made it up to number eight or nine on the New York Times list the week it came out. Uh, but it's a good book. A lot of people said it was my best book, and so the, re- the revision is coming out. So I, you know, I got a lot of material, and I'm writing on the internet on my website, Europac.net. We post a lot of commentaries that I write. I write them. Some other members of our team. We put out two free newsletters that people can subscribe to, at Europac.net. I've got a global investors letter. We have a precious metals letter. Oh, and also my precious metals company is Europac Precious Metals, where we sell physical gold and silver. Uh, so you know, lots of ways for people to interact with me and to do business with me. Great, Peter, and thanks for your in-depth interview today. Um, I know our listeners will find it very informative, and uh, I can personally recommend uh, your premium membership on your radio uh, station because uh, I'm a premium member, and uh, <clears throat> you offer some great uh, advice and information there daily. And uh, thanks once again for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate the opportunity. Great, Peter. Thank you.